company was really amazing. They love our dashboard so seriously. Now they have new project for us. So this project, what they want us to do is just to some kind of delve into employee detail and create dashboard from it. So now let's see what it is. So we need to see how much we have spent on salary from the inception of the company to the current year. Who is the top paid employee? Employees distance to work, work absence, raising, and when? Again, this is not a new data set. It is still the same data we had been working with before now. So we have a particular table existing inside that data to help us to actually create this dashboard. Let's see what data it is. So open this same dashboard. So you're going to actually find a particular table named employees. So under this particular table, you can see different you know, columns. This is what we're going to actually use to actually create the dashboard expected you know, out of us. You might not have the same column I have right now, but as soon as we start creating this, you will see how we actually create some kind of custom column to actually get the kind of view we want to have you know, for the company. So let's begin the creation. Open this particular PBIX and we can start ASAP. In this very part of the dashboard, you are going to learn something new. So we are going to learn how to create a dynamic, you know, um, title like what you have right right now. It says salary for June 2015. You know, top paid employee June 2015. If I actually take off June right now, which means I don't have any filter for month. So what we just say is salary for you know 2015 because i only have 2015 selected and here it says top head employee 2015 and if i go ahead and deselect this right now it sells salary till date and top head employee just like that so how can we create something dynamic as this not just that plus other visuals we have right here and as well the template a little bit different than what we had been creating let's get on it In order for you to understand what you're about to do, so just click on this particular data, you know, view and click on the employee um, table right here. So under the employee table, we have this particular data. So, and first of all, let us see this date right here. So we have date from 2014 to 2016. And we want to actually say, okay, now between this date, let's say we have this data to be like, uh, a data for of every single employee and we stop employing more people into organization 2015 and we still have the existing employees inside the organization and we have been paid them salary of this particular you know column right here every single month so we want to know how many salary have you paid have you paid from 2015 to 2014 and 2015 down to this particular current date of 2022 2023 24 25 whatsoever how do we do such calculation? Very simple and easy. Uh, first of all, what you have to do is to insert a new column. So now you can click on home. So you can see where we have new column right in. So go ahead and insert a new column to do that. So from this new column right here, we're going to name the column to be working years. So all we just want to do right now is to extract the years from this particular column. So I'm going to put my equal to right here. So we don't have to use the year function. It wouldn't work on this part. So what we just want to do, we just want to say higher this here. And what we want is just the year. Then you select this and um, you go ahead and hit your enter key. So all we just have right now is going to be the years. So we've just gotten the years uh, extracted and if I open it up right now, it gives us from 2014 to 2016, but on 20, um, okay, 2014, 2016, actually three years of data. So from this particular date down to this now, we want some kind of like, try to know how many years have we been in existence down to the current year we have right now. So we don't have any column that supports that. For we to create such a column, so we just have to create new column. And uh, inside this new column, we want to actually type current year. So I'm going to use to the function, diesel, hit your enter key. So 
you have to format this just come right here so come here and do the nice formatting so i want to use month day and year So you can see we have the same value, you know, December 7, 2020, all true. So all we just want to have from here is not the month and the days, but just the year. So we have to do the same thing. Uh, go ahead and insert in your column. So here we're gonna say, uh, year underscore current so i'm going to put my equal to and put my current year right in here so the current year we just calculated previously is this one and just want to extract the, the, the year from it and once i hit my enter key it's going to give me 2020 all true so what is next right now is for me to subtract this particular 2022 from this particular 2014, 15, and 16. So go ahead and insert another new column again. Remember, this is something you can do using Power Query as well. So if you want to use Power Query to do this, so be it. So right now I'm going to say uh, working years of working. Okay, years of service. So it's going to be equal to my year current underscore current right here so oh sorry we just made a mistake right so the year uh the year underscore current which is this particular column right here i want to subtract it from this particular working years right so this is the working years right now so if i hit my enter key let's see what we have So now we have this. So if I just click on this, so we have six, seven, and eight. So people who were some kind of like, you know, um, employed in 2014 had spent eight years with us. But people who had some kind of employed in 2016 had spent six years with us. And people who were employed in 2015 had spent seven years with us. So we want to calculate how many salary have we paid to people that had spent eight years with us, seven and even six years with us. So this is how we can actually get that calculated. So what do we do next is for we to insert a new column. So right now it is time for we to do that. So um, salary till date. So it's gonna be salary. So we want to multiply that by what? By the years on service, years of service. So once I hit my key right now, we're going to have the current value of it. Can you see it right now? So now this calculation uh, is something you have to understand. If you have your organization still be uh, inactive till dead, so you want to know how many years have we been operating so from 2014 to this particular current you know uh year it's actually eight years oh uh, sorry eight years rather eight years and now if we are paying um every single you know uh employees um one and one one thousand seven hundred dollars definitely we have paid thirteen thousand six hundred dollars till that you know that so that is how we can actually go back to what go back to this particular part and see how we can start running our calculation mm -hmm. we took it something as dynamic as what we have right here and here so let us watch what is right here so here right now it says salary till date and if i actually come and select something like april so what do we have we have salary for april and the top paid employee in the month of April. So if I select any of the years we have right here right now, we're gonna have something different again, which means salary for April 2015 and top paid employee for April 2015. So how do we get this achieved? Let us go back to the one we are creating. 
So now that we are here, the first thing I'm going to do is to actually insert a new card. I'm going to bring it right to the center. So now we have to actually go ahead and open the employee you know, table. So the salary till date we've just gotten created is this. So make sure you have it some kind of formatted to, you know, dollar number formatting or any currency uh, number formatting of your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and actually check it. And now we have it right here. So to have that kind of configuration to, you know, have dynamic title for it. So we must have to turn off this particular salary till date off. So go right here and click in general. So we want to turn on this particular one, but for now, there is no way we can use this so that we don't want to use it for now. So I want to come to effects and turn this off and go back to visual and turn the category label. So now we have nothing right on it. So what do we do next? So we have to bring in our, you know, slices or filter, whatever I want to call it. So I want to put it right here. Then I go to my calendar table, bring in my year, and I don't want it to be something like this. I want to use, you know, list. And from list, I just want to do under formatting. Go to slider settings. From vertical, choose horizontal. You have something like this, but a little bit weird. So make sure you get to have something like this. And now we want to turn off this slider setting. So we are cool with this. I'm really cool with this. You can just go ahead and drop it down a little bit. Something like this would be cool. So what is next for me is for me to actually copy this and paste it then move the one I've just copied away down to the size and after that I'm going to extend it and actually drag in my month right inside it. So uncheck the year and bring the month in. So let us look at what is going to happen if I have this filtered. What happened? Nothing happens. This value doesn't really change. That was due to the kind of relationship we've created. So I really wanted to do this for me to show you what it is that you need to understand about this. So now that we have just experienced that we cannot really filter this with month, let's see what the reason is. So going back to the relationship view or the model view right now. So we have our employee right here and we have the employee absence right here. So the employee is actually connected to the fact table and uh, the employee absence is actually connected to the date table, which means this particular employee does not have direct connection to our calendar table where we have our date right in. So for that, it's not going to work. So how can we go around it to make sure whenever we actually use the filter from month and year, it has any effect right on the employee table. So what we need to do right now is to come right here. So to establish the, you know, filter connection right now. So we have to come between the connection of this, you know, employee and, uh, you know, our employee absence right here and double click or right click. When you right click, you're going to see property. Just click on it. So if you don't want to go that way, you can actually use a double click. It's going to give you the same thing. Just double click right here. And here is going to actually open it up for you. So now what you need to do, you are going to actually change this one to both. That is just it. That is all you need to do. Click on OK. And now we can now filter, you know, using the calendar table because already we have this filter flowing to you know, employee and from employee down to, uh, to employee absence and from employee absence down to employee. So we go back to the visual, it has changed. So now it's working perfectly the way we really, you know, wanted it to be. So it is time for we to create, you know, that kind of, you know, um, dynamic title for it. So we just have to insert a new measure so let us have our, our dynamic title inside the employee table and here we go so i'm going to actually insert a new measure right in there you can right click and uh, click a new measure so you can change the measure's name so dynamic title one, because we're going to be creating two of it. So right now we are creating for, you know, a salary. So I'm going to go ahead and actually, you know, put my equal to right here, shift enter. So we're going to use variables to actually get it done. That is how we can actually get to create this in a very simple way. 
So it's going to be variable, you know, selected year. So selected year, so like this. So it's going to be equal to. So we're going to use another function called selected value to actually store what year has been selected from the slicer inside this particular selected year variable. So I'm going to actually say a selected value. So you get it. So now, what do we have to pass in right here right now? We have to pass the year column. So from the calendar table. So this is the year column right here. Not the employee year. No, no, no. Just go for the year column from your calendar table. So we've just gotten this one passed in. I'm going to have to close this. Shift enter to enter the third line. And right now, we're still going to actually have to go with another variable. Again, inside this variable, we want to actually say selected month so it's gonna be equal to using under selected you know value right here so we're going to start in the month selected so now we're going to use this either month one or month two so i'm going to use month two because this is the month i've been using so whatever you have named your you know a month column when you created the calendar table is what you have to select so you might not see exactly what i'm doing right now if you have just named something different so search for it and actually make sure you pick it up so i'm gonna to have to close this as well so what is the third one to be some kind of you know created I'm going to create another you know variable again the third variable will definitely be variable you know or static static title so variable static title which means if there is none of the field that being selected we want to display a static title so i'm going to have to actually uh, put my equal to first so the static title will definitely be uh, now we are doing for total, you know, uh, uh, revenue till date. It's going to be revenue till date. So I'm going to have to close it. So we are right there. Shift, enter the fifth line, the sixth line to create space for we to actually, you know, have space before we return this. So now I'm going to have to, you know, return. So I'm returning you know the variables but right here we are not going to return a single variable from here we have to actually concatenate them together but before we do that we want to actually use if condition to see what has been selected and if there is nothing that's been selected what i really want you to return that is what we're going to do right now so what do we do so i'm going to say if sorry so if selected month So don't forget it, here is it, selected month. And don't always forget, the selected month is actually this one right here. So we stored whatever month is being selected inside this particular, you know, variable. And we have used the variable name, selected month inside here right now. And what do we want if that is what it is? So I'm gonna say if it is equal to blank, if it is equal to blank, and two ampersand means and um the selected year which is this particular you know our variable right here is equal to blank as well if it is equal to blank so i want you to return static title so it's going to be static that is if the result is true i want you to return the static title we've just created so it's going to be static title remember static title here is actually a variable here that we store revenue till that right in so it's going to return us revenue till that that is what we want to do and if this is not the case what do you want me to do that means you are going to go ahead and return something else so what would that be so we just have to concatenate it with this so now what this would evaluate so if this is blank which is if this is blank and this is blank so it will now return revenue you know 
till date. But if that is not the case, what do you want it to return? It should return something else. So I'm going to actually have to put my comma right here right now, which is if the result is false. So we're going to have to return something like this. So using the you know, double quotation, I'm going to say uh, salary for the Oh, okay, salary for what? Don't, no, don't put the right there. So salary for, and I'm gonna have to close this and using the ampersand right here. So what I'm gonna do now is to concatenate whatever is being selected right here. So now I'm gonna actually go with month first. So I'm gonna go with selected month. Selected month here. Don't forget our selected month is this particular variable where we actually told what month has been selected. So after I might have done that, you can actually close this. And uh, double quotation and dark space. Double quotation. That means we want to have space between you know the month being selected before the year and using the ampersand to concatenate the year being selected. So I'm gonna say selected year right here. So that is exactly what it is. So this is all that we have to do. So this is everything you just need to do to have this done. And after this, we can just copy this and actually replicate it to whatever, you know, other visual we want to actually create a dynamic title for. I'm gonna hit my enter key, or you can come right here and check this and that will definitely create what you want to have for you. So right now our major is ready. So we can go ahead and take a look at how to use this. So click on this particular one here and go to what, go to format your visual and click on general and go to title. And now we can click on this particular FX for conditional formatting. So remember where you have this coding. So what value should we base this on? Click here and we go to employee. So we go to dynamic title one. And once we click on OK, so now, can you see it? So I'm gonna have to go ahead and centralize it. So bringing it up right here right now, you can see we have salary for September 2015, salary for October 2015, salary for December 2015, and if I deselect this and deselect this, what I say is revenue till date. So, we don't have to use revenue till date, it has to be salary till date. So quickly, let us go back to this part here and change this revenue to salary. So once we hit enter, then we're gonna see the effect right of it. So now we have salary till date, but once we select January, we see salary for January, 2016, 2015, nicely done, right? So I'm gonna move this right here. So right now we have to create an visual, which is actually our top paid, you know, employee for every single month and as well for the year, whatever. So I'm gonna to have to just compress this for now. So how do we do that? Very simple and easy. What you're gonna do right now is this. You just um, insert a card. So move the card right here for to see what you're doing. So once we have moved this card right here, so I want to go right way right now down and select where we have the employee right in. Uh, but before we do that, we just want to go back to here, and that uh, we have uh, no, we have first name and last name. So we want to join the two names together, you know, using the concatenate, whatever it is. So we just want to join it together, which means we have to insert a new column. So with new column inserted, you can type in full name. So for we to get to our full name right now, so which one will definitely go first? Let us see our first name. So first name right here. So concatenate that with this. So the delimiter should be spaced. So, you know, once you type in your double quotation, your top key to give a space and add this, then click on this and now last name. So it's gonna be last name right here. So under the employee table, 
And if I hit my enter key right now, this should give me the full name of the employees. So the reason why I did this was because I might have the same sub name for, you know, two, three employees or the same last name for two, three employees. So if I want to some kind of create my top or head employee, it will definitely give me problems. So I've gotten this right. So I want to come back right here. Now I'm going to drag in my full name into this. Look at what happened. It says first full name, but this is not what I want. It might not be the top head employee for the month. So we're not going to write any DAX to do this. But right now, we want to do this by the salary paid to till date. So open right here and see how we can do that. So once we have this particular part opened, how do we want to do this right now? So I'm going to bring in my full name to this particular part here. I'm going to select this. I want to select my top end. Then I'm just going to go ahead and say I'm going to need the top one. So look at the name we have right now. The name will definitely change automatically. So I'm going to drag in my salary. So if this particular employee has uh, the highest salary, the name will remain. But if not, let's see, it's going to change. I told you, so he's now the top paid employee for January 2015. So this is his top paid uh, you know, uh, person for January 2016. Okay, don't worry, we're going to get the value of how much was he paid. Before then, let us actually customize this with this kind of, you know, our dynamic title we have right here. So what I'm going to do is just to actually collapse this for now. I want to go to my dynamic title. All I just need to do is to actually control C to copy. And um, we have to open a new measure. All we just need to do right on the new measure is to paste this one right down and change some, you know, part of it. So it's working on it. We just have to paste it right here. I'm going to say title two, dynamic title two. And now instead of salary, I'm going to use employee, uh, top paid employee. Top paid employee. Top paid employee till that you see that so that is what it is so give it space because else you're gonna have some kind of you know something weird so once we've just gotten this done i'm gonna hit my enter key the problem is been solved so now we have just gotten this duplicated and we can click off from here click right here and uh, we just go back and do the same thing we've done so we just want to go right here turn off the uh, category label Click here, the effect, turn this off. Now, the title, open this place up, come right here, and go ahead and select it. Um, go on and go here to my employee. So, choose this, and uh, if I click on OK, I should have it. I want to just go straight up to the bottom, and use this, centralize it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now we have top paid employee till date January 2015. So if I select this, select this, this, select this, all I just have is top paid employees, employee are uh, just right here. But if I select like the month of May, top paid employee till date May. So I want to go ahead and remove till date May from here because that is wrong. So move it down. And uh, go ahead and select this. Uh, so now, now we just have to take this off. We can just say top paid employee. If I hit my enter key, that would be corrected for me. It's just top paid employee may. Okay, I can put my I can put in right here in May. And once we select year, it will be like top paid employee in May 2015 or 2016. So I'm going to select this. 
on a set like this and it will be top paid employee in May 2015. So we're not actually uh, fully done with this. I want to go ahead and just make it this way. Don't worry, we're going to format whatever we have right here when we're actually doing our you know, final touch to create the clean dashboard. But right now, we want to see how much was he paid from this salary we have right here. Easy. I'm going to select this SIM card again. I want to bring it up right here. Put my salary till date right in on, into it. And uh, we just have to open this place up. Right now, we have to bring in the full name we've created right here. Just like usual, I'm just going to select my top end. I'm looking forward to seeing the top one. And uh, the next thing I'm going to drag in my salary till date, put it right here and click on OK. So this is how much this person was paid in May, you know, 2015. So if you want to see if this is true, if this actually corresponds to the name we have right here, we can collapse this and definitely go and view it in a table for us. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and bring in the uh, full employee name. So now we have it. So I think we have first name. I want to bring the full name. So we can see the full name correspond to the name we have right here. Can you see that? The full name is this. And if we go back right now, we have this in person here. And if I make a change of July, so I have different person, October, I have different, okay, I have almost the same person. So you can see I have different person right here. Now to January, I have different person, 2016, you can see we have different person as well. So this is what it is that you can do. So we don't really need to have it like this. All I just have to do right now is to actually remove the full name and as well bring it back to uh, this. So now we have this. We can just have this kept for now. If you look at things, we are almost close to what we have right here. So just keep watching. You will definitely see how we can arrive at something just like this. Now we need to add a new column, which is called Walk Distance. So let's see how we can actually configure that to actually create a visual that looks just like this. So we have people who are very far from the walking place, we have people who are very near, and we have people who are just far, not very far, but far. So how can we categorize this with, you know, a custom column? So let us get on it. To calculate the employee work distance, we have to go back to our employee table. So getting back to our employee uh, table right here, we're going to see where we have home work distance. So how many, you know, what is the distance between uh, a particular employee's house to the workplace? So we have from 1 to 29. So we're going to make sense with this to categorize people who are, who are very far from the working place, who are not that far, and who are very near to the working place. So now we're going to add a new column. So I'm going to click a new column right here. Remember, whatever we do right here can be done with Power Query. So you don't necessarily need to do this using, you know, our DAX whatever, or you don't doing this on the Power BI environment right here. Uh, you can actually put, uh, use that as a challenge for yourself to see how you can do the same thing using Power Query. So now the next thing you're going to do is to actually type in the title, which is walk distance. So what I'm going to do now is to use the if condition to do that. So I'm going to say if, you know, um, home walk distance, is less than or equal to seven, so comma. And now we're gonna say the employee is actually near, which is the employee is not very far from the working place. So shift and try to go into the next line. And now the next one is gonna be uh, if or the employee home work distance again is less than 
or equal to 16 so what we want is gonna be just far which means the employee is actually far or any employees that fall under this category will live far from the organization but not too far and outside this any employee that does not fall between the two categories we've just kind of listed right now we're going to time them as actually very far remember you are not restricted to just you know to near far or whatever you can use anything you want to use to do this whatever it is so now i'm going to hit my enter key So we should see it right on this column right here. So now we has we say seven from zero to seven will be you know or near because this one is actually eight. So is under sorry, not that is not what the column. So let us actually go ahead and filter this. We want to just see those people that are near. So what number will they fall into? So don't use this number to judge it. This is not a number. So just scroll to this end and home distance actually starts from one to seven. So it started from one. We have two, three, four, you know, we have five, you know, and uh, we have seven. So that is what it is. So, so if you filter through, you will definitely see how it is. So I'm going to clear the filter. We don't need to filter anything. Clear the filter. And now we should go ahead and use this to create a visual to see how many employees we have, you know, falling in those buckets we've just kind of defined. So I'm gonna have to move this a little bit up. So nicely done. So we just have to create a filter. Uh, sorry, um, a visual right there. So I'm gonna create this particular, you know, do not our chat right here. Remember before you use this, you must be very sure that whatever, you know, you wanna push in right here wouldn't grow beyond the you know dimension it has currently so i want to go to my employee and i want to push in what i just got in some kind of created which is the work distance right now so here is it how many employees fall under this category of work distance and uh, you have actually seen where we calculated how many you know employees we have do we have we done that so if we have not done that, that means we have to redo that for now. But I, I'm sure we've done that. So total employee, we have it right here. So I'm going to click on it. And this gives us this. So just make sure you have it clicked in. We don't need dynamic title for this one. I want a ton of the data label. We should leave it, but we want to make sure it's actually popped out a little than what we have right now. So we select something different. This is better. So the next one again is for we to click on general. In there, here we have to change what we have in here. So make sure you control A to clear what it is that we have here. Then go ahead and just type in whatever you want to type in here. And after that, you can scroll down and centralize it. That is better. So for which to see how to transform this into the bottom part right now, click back on the visual and make sure you go to where you have your legend writing. So click on legend and make sure you have it on the bottom center. So this is fair. So you can just open it up a little bit. I want to leave it right here for now. The next visual we're going to create right now is salary till date by role. So I'm going to use this particular top to bar chart. So we have to move it down to this part here. So we have it open there like this. So we should make sure we have something like this, right? So now we want to bring in our role and our salary till date. So here we go. So quickly, we just have to make sure we do the needful. If I click right here right now, you can go ahead and copy whatever formatting we have for it and have it right here. And that would only affect the top. And for the you know y-axis, we have to make sure we come right here 
a ton of this and definitely change this to look some kind of more appealing nicely done so we close this and go for the x-axis we just want to turn off the x-axis totally but before then turn off the title and go right here and turn it off so that definitely we're gonna have something like this so that is nice so we just have to change the title so we just want to go right here and now we have to clear whatever we have right in here and type in whatever we want so it's salary tilted by row so here, here we go so we're gonna have another visual here that actually help us to to visualize our uh, employee resume for you know absence so we just have to copy this we want to copy this paste it down and we can go ahead and move it to this particular part here so which means we have to make it this way oh uh, sorry i'm gonna have to get it off so right now we're gonna have to make it a bit smaller so we can go ahead and now copy paste it down I move the copied one to this end here. So now, um, what I just want to do is for me to remove, you know, my, you know, I think we have what distance right here. So we just want to put in the reason for um, absence, and that is not actually right on this employee uh, table. So we want to go for just collapse this. Go for where we have the employee absence right in. So here we have it and we have resin. So we're going to have to bring in my resin. And this is what it is that we're going to have. So quickly, I want to click right here and go to my legend. I want to turn off the title for my legend. So do the same thing to this one. That will give you a clean chart. So turn off the title. So for the colors we have right now, do not worry. We're going to have them fixed in a Jiffy, but this is what we should have for now. So click right here, come here and go to title. So definitely we have to change whatever we have right in here to what we want. So here we go. So something like this would be cool. Let's see how many employees we have by different roles available in our you know, company. So I'm going to drag this up a bit. So like this would be cool. So now we just want to go and uh, I'm going to click on you know, resins or the resins. No, sorry for that. I'll have to collapse this. I want to go for employee and I want to click on row and I want to go ahead and bring my total employee right in here so if you look at it right now here gives us how many employees uh we have under you know sales or clerk and as well as the whole manager you know you know cashier and you know this so we can just go back so this will definitely respond to whatever filter we actually place on it you see that that is beautiful so once we've actually gotten this done the next thing we're going to do right now is to actually create a particular one here that will definitely show you know um the the, the reasons for employees absence on a monthly basis so that will definitely go with a line chart so i'm gonna to have to extend it to this level so we have to go ahead and pick up total employee and from here i want to go ahead and pick you know open up this particular employee absence i'm going to bring resin so it doesn't really make any sense right now so we're going to have to use our calendar table open calendar table right here and choose month two So now we have to switch things around right here. So reason should come to the legend while the month goes to the axis. Can we do that? So move this month to this side. And now we'll bring reason down to this legend area. So this will definitely create what you wanted for you. But I'm so surprised that it's not really the way it should be. Uh, the reason being was because we have this particular one right here. So I'm going to have to click it. So we've used this to filter this, so which is not really healthy. So go to formats and click on edit interactions. 
and make sure you uncheck it from here. Now we can see the trend line we're looking forward to seeing. So you can actually go ahead and click it again. There you go, you have this. So it is time for me to format this. All I'm gonna do right now is to click right here and click on this and have it for this. So click on it and have it for the line. So everything is uh, cool, but we have some kind of, you know, change the, you know, header we have right here for it, right? That is something very important. So go to the format here in general, then we click on title. We don't make it dynamic. We just have to make sure we clear this off and we type in whatever we want to type in. So employees by row. Now we have to do the same thing for this one here. Make sure you clear this off. So we can type in whatever we want to type in right here. So work absence by reasons on the monthly basis. I can just say on A. So let's make sure end on so it's gonna be on a monthly basis. So we have space to do that. So on a monthly basis. So here we go. So it is time for me to start to actually format this to make it look very some kind of you know cool, just like the previous one we've created, like this one right here. So in order to have this kind of formatting, remember what we need to do? We have to create a custom template for this. So how do we do that? Let's get on it. Now, let me do some arrangements here. So I'm gonna have to insert a new card. And on this new card, I'm gonna have to bring in my total employees. So we just wanna go ahead and close this and go to the employee so, you know, there, uh, table and scroll down to pick up the total employees. So here we go. So we have eight employees right now, based on the filter we have just placed in it. And if I deselect it, we have total 25 employees right working in our store or organization, whatever you want to call it. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to open up right here and turn off this. Then we have to format this. I'm going to put this on 60. So we're going to change this one to something bold. I want to go with something like this. Nicely done. So aside this, we just have to come here, change the title, but before then I want to turn off the background for it. So come here and open this up. And here we're going to type in total or total employee. So total employees. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit and centralize this. Then we want to have it in something bold like this. So I can crank it up to, you know, 15. So we just need to change this color to something cool. Let's go with this, not too dark. So we've gotten this right. So I'm going to have to make sure it's going to sit tightly right here. So something like this. So the next one now is for me to some kind of move this down. So I have to work with this. So here is my salary till date. So here we go. For salary till dates, we just have to come right here. Select this, go all the way down. Select this and I'll make this one 37. It's gonna be 37. Oh, which is, that was wrong. You know, sorry for that. Just put it on 14. And I'm gonna select something light for now. So I wanna use something light. So this is what I wanna change. So go to the visual area. So click on this and I wanna make this one 37. 37. And I'm gonna select something that looks and kind of popped out like this. Cool. So here we go. This looks better. So the next one is actually uh, way working, you know, with this. So here we go. So I'm going to have to bring it and be on the same. Anytime you see this red switch, 
means you you have gotten it right so you just have to make sure you bring it down a little bit so i'm gonna have to get this one and shift it down let's just work with this and see how we can actually get this formatted so just go right here for this value here i'm gonna use something like this so i want to put this one on 20. put this on 20 and uh, for the title we just want to make sure it's in 14 and this is okay so i can actually make sure i move this and now we have to work with this this is what is next so i want to actually make sure i move this down so it is time for me to format this so we make this one to be you know area black click here you want this it looks so huge right so we can put it on 20 classic so now we can actually turn this off and turn off the category label this is what we want so we want to have this beneath here can you see that so right now i can just decide to just shift this one down i want to create something like this i can decide to create space between this one all you just have to do is to highlight it and just create it and have a space just like this so now that we've gotten this kind of space so what we can do right now is to work with this i'm gonna to have to just move this nicely done so click on this one here and stretch it to this end until you see this red before you know that okay you have this um, thing now can you see it i'm gonna select this one right here i'm gonna move it and i have to open this place up can you see that so now this is everything we need to do so this is just your uh, text on on the card right here so once we are done with this what is next is for we to actually go ahead and click on our windows icon on our keyboard once we actually done that we're gonna see this you now up so type in snippy tool so it's actually a tool for you to some kind of take a screenshot yeah is it use it if you have under tool to actually do that for you so be it but that is uh, this is what I, what, what, I was, what I want to use or what I love to use all the time. I don't have to download uh, a custom one. So I'm going to have to select the area of the dashboard to this end. You can see the black area that surrounds your dashboard canvas. So now we've gotten the screenshot. So we can save it to anywhere we want to save it right in. As and I'm going to save it right on this one. I have something I saved like that before. I just want to save it on top of it. I'm going to say yes. So we can go ahead and close this for now. So it's time to go back to PowerPoint. Previously, before now, we've created something like this. But we're not going to use this again. What we can do is to actually insert a new you know, slide and use it. So we do not need any of this so ctrl a to highlight everything and click on delete and have something as blank as this so the screenshot of our dashboard we've actually taken is what we're going to get in right here right now so go to what go to pictures from there go to this device and you select where you have the picture saved in or the screenshot saved in so you know Mine is different, so select it from your own system. Click on OK, and now here is the screenshot. Let me take you back to uh, the dashboard environment here. Please, whenever you want to take the screenshot, you see the black part of this edge is what you need to set to take the right screenshot. Like this, I'm going to take the two again. I will select it from here. Once I have it, I'm going to hold down my mouse and drag it and see until it sizes this part here don't extend it to this end or like this it's going to give you something different so make sure you select this particular black area that surrounds it that is all you need to do so we don't need it i'm going to cancel no so let us go back to the powerpoint 
So here we go, we have this, right? So we just have to resize it and make sure it covers every part of it. So I'm gonna have to hold my mouse down and drag it until I feel lit up. Now we have this. So it is time to get much more deeper into this. So the first thing I'm gonna do right now is to actually go to insert. And from insert, I wanna pick this up. I'm gonna pick this up like this particular rectangle rounded corners. So I'm gonna just drag it down here, move it. So create a space here. It's gonna make your dashboard to looks, uh, look very much cool. So now for the corner, I don't want to be some kind of too round. Right now I can actually go ahead and fill it all the way down to this end. Beautiful. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to right click. And once I right click, I'm gonna see where we have format shape. So we have it. So I want to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna to have to give a little transparency to see what is behind it. So turn off the line, move this right here. Pretty nice. So I'm not gonna use the same thing for this. I wanna take just a rectangle, not the one with rounded corner. So now I just go here and drag it and cover this place up. We still want to keep a space right here. Release it and make sure you drag this and uh, here we go. This is the you know space between them. So I'm going to reduce this as well, the transparency to see what is behind it. Remove this. Um, I want to bring this down a little bit. So I can actually some kind of create a duplicate of this. But before then, I want to make sure I have it to actually be on the same line. So I can decide to bring this one down. Once I bring it down, I'm going to click this one. Hold your control to select both of them. Select this and say move to top or line top. Now they will now align in the same line, right? So to select and select this one, control D to duplicate it. So I'm going to have to scroll down. So now I'm going to move this one down. This space between them is fine. So we have this. If you're not really sure if this is aligned properly, you can just move this one here. As soon as you're satiated with the space you want to have at the bottom part, just move this one here like this. Can you see? So we don't have equal space between, we equal, you know, justification between here and here. And we don't have equal, you know, alignment between here and here. What you can do right now, first of all, select this one and select this one. Go to shape, format, align, and I want to align this one to the right hand corner. That is done. So for which actually be I'll keep the same you know, space right here and here. So just deselect all of them. Now, once you've selected them, select this the, the, the bottom one, click on this one, and uh, go right here and say align top. Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. Yeah, we made a mistake now. I think... Um, what we need to do instead is for we to some kind of like move this up like this. Now we can select, hold your control, select this, sh shape format, align and align bottom. So now we now have them to align properly. This is beautiful. So now we need to actually create some demarc demarcation for each one of them. So what I'm gonna do now is this, I wanna take up this line you're gonna have to make sure it starts from here. Hold the shift key, drag it all the way down until you have it to stop at where it stops. So we don't have to do this over and over again. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna have this right here. Done. So the next one again is me dividing this one to stay on its own. We go to the line or shapes and line don't set this particular dot you're seeing, else you're going to connect it and it will be connected to the shape itself. I don't want to do that. I just want to come right here, starting from here, hold your shift key down to have a straight line. Now, here we go. 
So we're done from here right now. So what is next that we can do? The next thing we can do right now is to actually change the colors, right? Do it. Okay, for the first time I'm done with this, I want to just make sure I change the color of this one. I'm going to put it on 0%. I want to choose this color we have right here. Then I'm going to do the same thing to this. And put it on 0%. So now the next is actually the stroke we have. How do we take care of it? So I'm going to move this right, this part here, then we can see it better. So now that we have this, we just want to scroll down. So we've selected the line, Let's go to gradient line, take one stop away from the stops. So I'm going to have to put the one at the edge into the middle and shift this one right here right now. So this one has to be white. Make sure you have white selected. So I want to go to the weight and turn the weight to 10 points. Nicely done. So we want to select the same color we have for this card for this one at the right hand corner. I'm going to select the same color for it again. So this is what I've done right here. That is nice. Beautiful. Okay, what do we do for the other part of it? So we just have to make sure we go to home. Double click on this format painter and actually copy the same formatting for this and the same formatting for this one as well. Can we see that? That is cool. So once we are done with that, so it is now for me to concentrate on what we have right here. So I'm going to turn this one into black. So for we to take the format painter off, we have to click on escape and that will definitely remove the format painter. So this one will definitely be in black, but before then, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna go ahead and just go insert shapes and bring it uh, bring it in a new shape. I'm gonna drag on that shape right here. So, so take off the line. And the coveness is too much, I'm going to reduce the coveness like this. So this is what I have. So what I need to do right now, I wouldn't touch the color for now. I want to go right here. I'm going to have to use this particular shadow and uh, select the preset we have right here. And this is the preset I want to use. And I'm going to have to put it on what? just put it on 0% so it will give us this effect so I'm going to copy this one here drop it down and have it right here and make sure you hold your cursor down and drag it and have something like this release it Ctrl D to duplicate it for this one here just make sure you escalate it to the top and uh, move this down a bit so once we've done this, I'm going to have to duplicate this again. So I want to have to some kind of make it small. But this time around, we can't see what is behind here. I want to have to just go ahead and reduce this. Then we can see what, let me just turn it off totally. Then I'm going to turn this down as well. So we can see what is behind this. So I'm going to have to just go ahead and do this. I want to just make it this way it this way so manually we can just drag it down this is what we have so i don't want to have this one i want to put it on black i'm going to use something black as this so we want to turn this one into black the same black we've used is still what i'm going to use as well zero percent so totally i'm going to turn it to zero, change it to black, turn this to black, the same black, don't use different black, change it to the same black. So now we have this kind of, you know, template being created. So now we are coming back again, but this time around, um, if this is too dark for you, you might want to change your mind to actually change it quickly before you definitely take it to the, you know, Power BI environment. So you might want to use something like this. 
if you want to use something like this, so be it. So you have to quickly, you know, click on home, double click on this and have it for this, have it for this, have it for this, and have it for this. This is what we've just used right now. So I don't wanna, we don't want to use something very dark as what we've just, you know, created. So next is for we to get this template off from here. But before we do that, I just want to do something. Have this one duplicated, Ctrl D. I'm going to take it to the top level right here. So resize it to cover to this end. So move it in. So once you've gotten what you want, so just make sure you have it to cover the top, just like this, just a design, whatever. So now I'm done. File, export, change, you know, save as another file type, double click on it, change what it is that you want to save it with. I'm going to save it with this GIF right here. So I have, you know, 01, 02, here's going to be my 03. Or three, and I'm gonna click on save, just this one. So next is for me to go back to my PowerPoint environment here. So I'm gonna bring it, so do not select any visual or any, you know, all cards at all. So go ahead and click on this particular, you know, format your report page, click on canvas background and turn this into 0%, go bring your image. Okay, now here we go, we have it. So it can not really show up very well because we have background on almost all of them. So I'm going to start, you know, touching the formatting right from here. Go turn off this background. Turn it off. Click on this. You know, hold your control to click on everything you have right here. We should be able to do this all at once. So you can now come back right here right now. Um, Okay, we can do this all at once. I think we have to do it by and by. So I'm just going to click on this one here. Click here and go to general effects, turn off. Click quickly. We can do this within some few sec. So we have to turn off as well. So do this as well. Turn, the, turn this off. And finally, we click on this and we turn it off. So dashboard is taking the right shape. So what is left right now is to actually, you know, change the colors we have for every single, you know, card we have right here. So go here and click on call out value. I'm going to change it to white. Wow, it pops. So go right here and change the title text to this. So we do the same thing to this one here, text. To this, this one here, text to this color here. And now we now go ahead and give the value something brighter. So we can touch the value here, give it something brighter. And do the same thing to this one as well, something brighter. So now, can you see what we have here? So we are almost close to what we have right in here. Can you see? So now it is time for me to format, you know, the charts we have, you know, format all of them and uh, make sure we have something just like this, which is very simple and easy. And I believe you can do it. But if you think you have uh, something to learn again, let us keep going and see how we can actually get the right color for our dashboard. So the first step is to just, you know, map this. I'm going to take it up. So I'll open it up like this. Then we have to do the same thing to this as well. Nicely done. And uh, click on this one and take it up just like this. So let us start our formatting from here. So what I'm going to do right now is just to click on this. Remember we are using, you know, celerity of dates as the measure, so salary as the measure. So we want to go to bars and I'm going to scroll down a bit. You can see this FX right here is where we have to start this conditional formatting. So the highest value will go ahead and take something like this. 
Oh, okay. The lowest value we definitely go with a color that looks like this. So if I go ahead now and come here and go to my employees, I want to go for salary till date where we have it ready. So here we go. That was the column we created for it. So I'm going to click on OK. So now it, it gives us this, but we don't really like the legend to be right on it. So what we can do is just to go ahead and clear off the legend we have right on it. So turn it off. So we have something like this. So now we can do the same thing to this one here. Very simple. So before then, let us just make sure we move this up a bit. I told you, once you're actually done creating your template, you can actually adjust things and make sure it looks just like what you're thinking. So we can click right on this one and just move it to open it up like this. So now let, let us format the column, click here. And here we select, we select this, we select and we select something like this. We click on OK and turn off the legend as well. This is what it is. So now the next one is for we to some kind of click on this one here and um, we go to the line. Make sure you scroll down until you have your colors. And now for this one here, I want to use different color, which is going to be this color right here. And the next one is going to be this same dark color we're using. That is beautiful. So we select this one as well. We go to slicer, slices, click on this color here. So I want to change this color to this color. And nicely done, I'm going to change this color to something like this. So we come to this last one here. Quickly, we have to change this color to this color. We use two prominent color we are using. Nicely done. So our dashboard is being formatted just like how a dream dashboard. All right, one more thing. We have to go back to a PowerPoint to do something and what it is. So I'm just going to take another screenshot again. I want to show you something. So make sure you take a screenshot. So you save it to whatever you want to save it right. You can save it on the previous one and just replace it. So I'll just use this to save and it's not going to save right in that I know I'm not going to use over and over again. We can save and replace it. So we can go ahead and close this up. Go back to PowerPoint where we created our template right in. So I'm going to drag the new one I have created right in here. Just go to pictures, this device, and you select where you have it saved in, that is desktop. The first letter you type it and you select it. So click on open and make sure you do the same thing you've done previously and hold your um, mouse down and drag it and cover it up right to this level. So this time around, I just don't want to leave here empty. I want to use something that a little tell story uh, is an icon that will literally not speak volume than just leaving it empty the way it is. So what you can do is to click on insert and uh, once you click on insert, you would you should see where you can get icon from from here. So click back on this insert. So this world definitely depends on the version of PowerPoint you're using. If you can't find it on your own version of there of, uh, of PowerPoint, I'm going to show you another way to get it. But let us use this right here. So click on the icons and it's going to load all the icons we have right on PowerPoint. So I'm going to type in, uh, let us type in human. So once we, once we type on uh, type on it, you know, H-U-R-M, we can see all this. So I want to go with, um, I want to go with something like, just select random one and see which one will go best. You can clear it. And once you have it cleared, you can scroll down. You're still going to see more of it like that. So just search through and see what icons uh, will definitely fit into what you want 
once you find the I kind of icon that will definitely you know look fine and what you really want to do or uh, use it for you can definitely you know uh, click on ok and make use of it that is all you just have to do so let us go with those ones i'm gonna click on insert so they have been inserted so i'm gonna have to move them away from there so click on it and just move them so which hand will definitely you know make sense with what you want uh, this would definitely speak like an insert. Just let us use something like this. I just want to show you an example. So look for what is going to actually make sense with the uh, visual you have. I'm um, going to have to go with this. Just go with something like this. But if you look at them, they are too dark. So we have to some kind of you know, change the colors. So right click and go to format graphic. So quickly we come down to the fill color here. And we choose to use something like this so instead of we to choose that again just go ahead and copy the same format for this one here so nicely done so don't worry i'm going to show you the next way to do this if you don't have this particular you know kind of powerpoint so i'm going to delete this now we have this right here go here go to export and make sure you save I'm not using under file type. We're gonna use the GIF. So now we're gonna to have to go ahead and get to save it where we've saved others. And uh, we have to replace this one here. Just this one. Going back here. So we go. And don't select any of the visuals. So click here and go to Converse background and change this one to this. So now can you see it? This looks more popped. So in case you can't uh, get this kind of you know, icons due to the version of uh, PowerPoint uh, you're using, uh, this is another way to get it. So just open your browser. I'm gonna show you a particular site where you can get free icons from. Then from there, you will definitely find unlimited icon for free, even um, GIF icon that animates. So let's do that. So right here we have this particular free vector icon site. So the site is called um, flight, uh, Flat Icon. Flaticon.com. Can you see it right here? So here is it. Just go to this site. Type it right in. Just type in flaticon.com. So once you type it in, you're gonna find different icons right here. So all you have to do is to be very specific by making a search on what kind of icon you want. So I'm just gonna type in human. So it's gonna give me all the human icons we have available, you know, on this site that are actually, you know, are PNG. Can you see them right now? So we can still get to use whatever we have right here. Can you see them? Can you see them right here? So let's say we want to use eight of these to, you know, uh, get what we have just, you know, used the other icons for, you know, represent the same thing. So we can just check through and see what it is that we have right here. I'm looking for which one would best, you know, explain what it is that I have right there. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. All I have to do is for me to choose PNG. I'm going to have to say download free. So it's initiating the download for me. So it's going to be downloaded to my systems. So now as you can see, it has been downloaded right here. So all we have to do is to go back to Power BI click on it and uh, we can go ahead and go to insert so we want to go click image and we navigate to where we have it right on our pc so we go to download once you open and download you can see it right here it's a businessman so let's see So now we have the icon. So it's actually a plain uh, PNG 
no background, whatever. So we can just make it small. And we can have it right here. Then this can be used as well. I just wanted to just show you also the sample. So ladies and gentlemen, so we can now come right here and name this to be um, employee. So our three dashboards are actually completed. So let us navigate this one and some kind of compare this with the previous one we've created and see what it is that we've done and all that. So I'm going to collapse everything so to have a wider screen. So now, can you see? Can you tell which one is which right now? Maybe you could get it bit through the color and, uh, you know, something like that. Can you see it right now? This is what it is that you should actually know about. So you can create an awesome dashboard using the combination of PowerPoint and um, Power BI. So PowerPoint will help you generate your, your, your templates while you know, Power BI will go with the logic and the visualization. And that is how you can actually navigate through the two softwares to create an amazing dashboard. So you've just learned something new today. If you don't know that you could do something amazing with PowerPoint and, Dash and, and um, Power BI, now you've known you can be very much creative because already I've shown you how to use shape, convert shape to whatever you want and all of that. So keep watching. More to come. Let us jump into the next section.